Now the important thing when servicing the brake system is you need to be careful because the brake pads and linings may contain asbestos. So you want to use a mask and you don't want to blow out the area with a compressor because it could hurt you. So here's some safety notes. Now never use petroleum based solvent to clean any brake parts. Always use an approved brake cleaner. When filling the master cylinder, use only DOT3 brake fluid. Here's some tools that are required. You want a jack and a jack stand, a lug wrench, needle nose pliers, screwdrivers, and a socket wrench with sockets. Some specialty tools are a caliper spreader, brake spring pliers, brake adjusting tool, brake bleeder hose, and a brake cleaner. Okay, the first thing you want to do is you want to set the emergency brake. Use a jack to lift the car and a jack stand to support it. We have this one on a hydraulic lift to be able to film it. You can see two caliper bolts that they are going to come out and you break them with the wrench and they should be able to break free eventually and just hand turn them out. You are going to notice that there are two different lengths, so don't get them mixed up. Find yourself a coffee can or a box to keep all the parts in. You want to lift the caliper, kind of rock it, and then set it on top. Now this is a caliper spreader. This is a tool you should buy. It's an additional tool, a specialty tool, but it's a great thing to have. And the good thing about it is that you can evacuate the brake fluid. You know, bleed out the old brake fluid or any contaminated brake fluid by putting pressure and expanding out. Now you have a bleeder hole right there. See where he's pointing at. You attach a simple hose to it and then you just break the bleeder line. And as you expand the caliper spreader, it evacuates all the brake fluid from there. Make sure it goes into a pan and recycle it. After you're done, you go and tighten up the drain, just kind of snug. Pull off the hose and that's a done deal. Now you take the caliper spreader off. Okay, we've got a little tricky part here and you've got to pay attention. If you get these mixed up, go back over it. You have two wires on top. Okay, you pop the first ones off. See that? Put these in a can or whatever you're holding all your materials in. Now the next one pops out of the side of the brake and it goes around underneath the upper pin. Now you go ahead and pull the pin out of the caliper. This releases the wire. Now each pin has a small hole where the wire will go back in. Now you go ahead and pull out the second pin and the brake shoes pull out. Now this one had an anti-squeal on the brake itself as you can see right there. Now go ahead and pull the rotor off 
and there's two clips on the top and bottom and they may fall off when you pull the pads off you see them right there you can clean them with a little brake fluid if you need to clean them up Now if you're concerned about your rotors, take them to a local parts house or machine shop where you can have them turned. They should be smooth. Now if you didn't feel any pulsation effect when you're putting on your brakes, they're probably okay, but a visual inspection is important. Now you go ahead and place the rotors back in place. The outboard brake pad or the pad nearest the wheel has a single shim on it. The side that faces the caliper piston has two shims. Here is an example of it. Now you have two shims. One is a half shim and one is a full shim. There we go. We, we got them to fit together. And you go ahead and place it right on the brake pad, just like that. Now you place the new brake pad into the caliper. And this is a tough thing to do when you're by yourself. We don't doctor up these videos. We show you just how it can be done with one person. But you can see there's a degree of difficulty. And you insert the bottom pin through the bottom pad. It's kind of tough to get it started, but once you get it through there, you're all right. Now when you put the top one in, you only want to thread it in halfway. Remember our wires that we have to put on there. Okay, the arms and the springs go in each side. See, you've got to hold it in place there. And the pin goes through the top. Like I say, it's really kind of hard to do. But if you do this enough, you get used to it. See how they connect into the holes on the side? See how it fits right in there? That's how it's supposed to look. It just snaps right in. Now the second springs connect into the hole. Remember, on top first and then on the bottom. The bottom caliper bolt, see how it fits right in the hole? Take the screwdriver and make sure it's in there tight. And that's how it's supposed to look. Now you slide the caliper back in place and this is done the same on both sides. So how you did it here is how you're going to do it on the other side. Remember the two bolts. We've got the ones on the top longer than the ones on the bottom. Now you don't want to be turning this with a wrench at this point in time you don't want to cross thread these. It's very important. You want to start them by hand and then take the wrench and just snug them up. 